You see in Bangladesh right now, of 165 million people, there is roughly 82 million below the age of 21. In countries like Bangladesh and India now, we talk about what is called a demographic dividend, which is that there are lots of young people um, that are coming into the workforce. And it's extremely important that we train, educate, and provide services so we, they become sort of active citizens, rather than, you know, if you, if you miss the opportunity, then what could happen is you'd have large numbers of unemployed people, um, possibly leading to other social unrests and that kind of thing that we are seeing in other parts of the world. So for us, the window of opportunity is now. Um, it's, we're right in the, I think we're right at the start of it. When we started 30 years ago, we, we worked on relief rehabilitation. We worked on education at the primary level. We, we worked on healthcare, which was basically uh, focused on maternal child health. So, you know, uh, interventions which were more sort of um, focused on younger people. Now we need to look at the youth segment, um, looking at secondary, tertiary education, looking at healthcare issues which are related to the youth, so reproductive health again uh, comes into the play, financial services uh, for the youth. Um, so I think, I mean, in terms of a development organization in a country which is really interested in working on sort of the holistic uh, development issues, youth logically presents the best investment uh, to make. The reason why we think savings is important for the youth is because if you look at our country perspective, we have high primary school completion rates, but, the, but we see that there's a big fall off in secondary school completion rates. So if we could get, you know, children staying in schools, chances are they'd marry later, have children later, be better parents, and so on and so forth, which is why we've got a big focus on savings for the younger sort of segment of the youth, which is 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds. And we think that if we can grow that habit um, from that age, uh, the social aspects, we, we can probably have some impact on that, but also we get them to create a habit which probably may stay, stay with them for life, hopefully. Because we're a large multifaceted organization and we do work on so many different fields, I think we measure impact quite well on health, education, human rights, and all the other things. Whenever it comes to financial services, we kind of struggle with that question because I think, um, I mean, let's just take the question of the youth, for example. Um, we could have very, very uh, successful financial services products that are doing well. Now, as, I'm, as I said before, the idea is not just to give them financial services for the sake of financial services, but to also have impact on other aspects of their lives, from health to education to parenthood to all of those sorts of things. Uh, how exactly you measure um, the specific sort of uh, impact of that one service, because after all, you know, there are so many different interventions going in. Um, just to single out one and say this has happened because of financial services is always difficult to, to claim. And I think, I don't know if there, I mean, there are people who are trying out different impact measurement tools such as RCTs. Um, how successful we've been in sort of being able to pinpoint the financial services being the one intervention. But I think, I think what is important to understand is that, you know, you have to provide a lot of different types of interventions and they all play a part. It's easy enough to reach the youth, but then to make sure that they're the ones using the services we're offering, and they're the ones get getting the benefit of the services we're offering has remained a challenge. Uh, so for example, we've seen you know, so many cases where we've given sort of you know, enterprise loans to, to young people um, who said, look, I want to start doing, I want to start an enterprise. Uh, but then we find out a few months later that they've basically given that money to their parents or an older brother or someone else who's then using the, using the capital. Um, so that remains a challenge, whether we can sort of the, the, the products that we are targeting towards the youth are being used and managed by the youth and are they getting the benefit out of those products. Um, so that's where, on the savings side it's a little easier, but even there we have the same sort of uh, risk where young people start saving money, and at some point the family comes and sort of takes over that saving, a parent or an older sibling, and then use it for themselves. Um, of course, you can, one can claim that if it's improving the, you know, the income of the household, then you know, they benefit as well. But the idea really is to empower them, um, and that is, remains a challenge. 
in the large part, we run a sustainable microfinance program. But of course, there are certain segments, and the youth segment is one such, and because the loan sizes tend to be smaller, um, it is a more risky segment to, to uh, finance. But we still want to go ahead and do that, uh, because we see that as being a good investment to make from a social perspective. Um, and as long as overall we're okay, uh, we're happy to cross-subsidize that segment.